Here's our sample from the Behrman funnels. I'm now in the microscopy lab uh, and I'm going to show you the technique that we use to uh, examine this sample under a microscope. So let's open up this sample and I have a, a little device here. It's just simply a micro pipette or a Pasteur pipette uh, with a piece of tubing on it and I'm going to gently suck up if you like and I'll take another another sample Okay, like that. And now I'm going to examine what I see uh, under this stereoscopic microscope. And I have a camera attachment mounted to it, and so I'll record what I see. So let's have a look. At low magnification, a first glimpse of our soil extract seems to show nothing more than soil particles in water. However, as we increase magnification, we begin to see many tiny soil inhabitants. The vast majority of the visible organisms in this extract are silver, hair-like worms, collectively called nematodes. To help you appreciate size relationships, a graduated slide has been submerged in the extract. This slide is in essence a very tiny glass ruler. The distance between the small gradations is one-tenth of one millimeter. In another extract I have located a rather large nematode which we can examine more closely. Nematodes have a variety of feeding habits. This particular example is likely a plant parasite. It makes a living by sucking the juices from plant roots using specially adapted mouth parts. This individual seems less bothered than others by the lights of the camera, but is determined to tie itself in a knot. The rapid movement and transparent body of this next soil organism makes it difficult to see clearly. This eight-legged creature is one of many species that belong to the mite family. In the remaining sequences, we are using a more powerful microscope. At this magnification, we are able to see single-celled creatures called protozoa. These fast-moving organisms are considerably smaller than even the small nematodes we see in this sample. At higher magnification, we turn our attention to examining internal structures rather than simply identifying individuals. At first glance, this nematode appears to be little more than a clear tube with a digestive tract suspended inside. Here is a closer look at a smaller nematode. It moves by generating a wave of contractions along its body wall. This produces a whip-like movement that propels them forward. This particular individual appears to be stuck to a piece of organic debris, preventing it from moving forward. In this segment we see a very large, somewhat transparent insect larva, next to it a silvery mite, and above it a comparatively small nematode. This should serve to remind us of the huge diversity in size that exists among soil microanimals. Here is another look at a mite using a different light source. Its comparatively rapid movement and its desire to hide behind organic debris makes it elusive to photograph. Here is a mite viewed at even higher magnification. It gives us a clearer appreciation of mite anatomy. The star of this short sequence is a rotifer. Rotifers commonly live in freshwater habitats, but can also make a home in marine and soil environments. Rotifers feed by using tiny hairs called cilia to sweep particles of organic debris 
or single-celled organisms into their mouths. This rotifer moves in an accordion-like fashion, planting its sticky foot and pushing off from it. These energetic creatures before you are called tardigrades, also known as water bear. These eight-legged animals are common to moist environments. However, they have a unique ability to survive in extreme drought and cold. Therefore, we find tardigrades in our more drought-prone grassland soils as well.